All right, well, this is an experiment I've been wanting to do now for a little over a week, and I'm just now getting all the tools to do it and testing equipment. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was playing out. I play in a Leonard Skinner tribute band, and this is an acoustic 360 bass rig. It's 1968, and it worked really well here at the house. Uh, still works good. I uh, played it the morning of, uh, before the show, and, and even, even did the sound check with it and did well even through most of the first song and so when we got into the second one uh, notice it started falling out and by the third song it had completely dropped out and this is an issue I've had uh, several times in the past it's not that often I've, I've had it but I've had it I've been playing long enough to have to have had this issue probably about a half a dozen times and it's an issue that's hard for some people to wrap their mind around it too and that's what we're dealing with is low voltage. And that's what happened uh, at that show. It performed pretty well during the sound check. Uh, but when everything got powered up uh, for the energizing show at the beginning, well, you know, it started uh, dropping the voltage on that circuit. And it just caused this amp to fall out. And so, and reason why it's kind of hard for some people to wrap their mind around it, well, my amp was plugged into that circuit and mine didn't go out. Well, yours didn't need the power that this one required. That's why yours didn't fall out. And so this is an older amp, too. So that probably makes somewhat of a difference. Uh, but anyway, I want to get back to point of, of this experiment here and kind of show you uh, why this can be a, a, a potential problem. And it can burn up your amplifier, too. Low voltage is as bad, if not worse, than high voltage. If you have too much voltage coming in, that can be bad for it too. But you can really burn up uh, your appliances, especially these newer refrigerators. Uh, they're pretty sensitive to some of these uh, uh, voltage issues like uh, the sine wave problems. And uh, I'm not going to get into all of that. Uh, so, But you, know, you may want to consider uh, installing a, a power conditioner on your house uh, to help balance the sine wave uh, coming into it and also uh, any brownouts that you could potentially having and, and, and surges too that can uh, come into your home and, and damage uh, appliances as well. I remember during Hurricane Sally uh, there was a lot of people complaining uh, on social media about uh, their two and three thousand dollar refrigerators uh, was toast and so on and so forth and that was because of some brownouts that was going on and it destroyed their appliances. So anyway, I'm going to get right back on point to this experiment. And what I have, just so you'll know what I'm using, is a Vivor. Um, this is a transformer. It's a variable transformer. It'll go down, I think, to 5 volts to 130. And I've also, to order to make sure this is right, I also have this calibrated with the Klein Tools multimeter. And also this x which is plugged into the other device right now. So uh, these two are, are the same. So I'm pretty sure that this is accurate, the Klein and the x -Tec. But the Vivor is actually not right. It's about 5 volts off. And I've noticed that the lower the voltage gets on it, the more uh, correct it gets. It gets within about 2 to 3 volts uh, of being correct when you drop it. And so anyway, uh, this thing will take it down... Uh, all the way down to 5 volts, which I'm not going to do. Uh, but this LC1200 trip light is a device that will actually correct low and high voltage. And so we're going to get to that in just a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and do this experiment first so you can kind of see uh, why this can be a problem. So I'm plugged in. i got this acoustic rig powered up. And it, right now it's, it's receiving 121 volts. And so I'm going to drop, I'm going to turn up the volume here a little bit. I'm going to drop the volume, I mean I'll drop the voltage down to, let's go ahead and hit a core of my bass too. That's too high. And 105, 104 volts. getting weaker and weaker About 96 volts 
and I'm not going to take it down too far because I don't want to burn, burn up my L. But let's go back up and I'm going to turn it up to 120. You can see this pilot light get brighter. And we're back at 121 volts. And so the short of this is that's what happened. Uh, low voltage coming through uh, caused the amp in here to get weaker and weaker until it just finally fell out. And so I can't control uh, what the house power is. So the only thing I know to do was to do what I just did, and that's to get this trip light uh, converter, which will monitor the power uh, coming into this and keep a steady 120 volts uh, coming into this head because I've noticed that even a 5 volt from a from 115 to 120 is a big difference. I mean it starts sounding bad at really at 115 volts. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and convert this over real quick so you can see how this other part works. Just give me a second to put my camera on my head. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to power this down. And I'm going to come unplug from this. Notice it's two prong too. Uh, that's another thing I got to fix on this is uh, they just didn't do a lot of grounding back in the uh, the '60s, and so this is the all original. I've, I've got to fix that because I've already been lit up a few times by it. I've been lit up quite a bit in the past too uh, from my old amps I've had. So. Anyway, I'm plugged into the back of this. I'm going to go ahead and take this off so you can see. Uh, in case you want to look right down the model number. It's a trip light uh, line conditioner, LC1200. It's got four outlets on the back. And so uh, this thing claims that it can uh, correct voltages uh, from low as 80 volts uh, to overpower as much, I think, as 130. So we're going to see if it will do what it says. This is the back of this rig. And of course, right now it's off. And so we're going to go ahead and power this thing back up again and see what happens. So let's uh, plug this in. Uh, this is the plug for the power conditioner up there. Okay, still at 121, showing about 120, 121 there. And so this is the front of this power conditioner here. You can see uh, that it's showing within normal range. And so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to drop this and see what happens. So we're at 120. At 119, let's see what, what it takes to get it to drop. There at 113, basically 112. See it's showing low voltage there, but it's performing like it should. We've got 122 volts still produced. So that's good. Let's see what else happens. About 102 volts. So now it's saying very low voltage, but we're still holding at 121, 122 volts output. That's good. Let's see what else it'll do. Let's take it down further. We're at 96 volts. Let's see what we're. Okay, here we go. So here we go. At 96 volts, it drops it down to 115 volts. So it's not quite 80 what they claim that it'll do, but that's still good enough for me because, I mean, that's a pretty big spread of voltage. I mean, really, I don't think that a house circuit would get below that. I guess you never know. But if it can correct it from 95 volts, uh, I think that's probably a, a safe enough spread uh, to justify using this trip light between uh, my amplifier and the, the house power system. 
So anyway, I guess the short of the story is this, uh, you know, if you have delicate electronics in, in your home, which is refrigerators and stuff like that, uh, you might want to consider putting a power conditioner on your home, having a qualified electrician come out there and do that. Uh, that's another good reason to have a generator installed in your house too, because uh, especially a whole home generator, if you get a real good one, it, it can monitor the electrical system coming into your house and if it has a brownout condition, it will swap over until that is corrected out there at the road. And I highly recommend you get one, especially here in South Alabama, especially if you have natural gas. Uh, it's a good thing to have. Uh, but also know, too, that uh, there's other things that can affect the performance of your appliances as well uh, outside a voltage issue. This, if you have uh, wiring, uh, if the outlet is not wired correctly, I'm a home inspector, and I inspect these outlets in, in homes, and uh, it's m one of the most common issues I find doing an, during an inspection is improperly wired outlets. I'm going to go ahead and unplug this and show you what I'm talking about. I, I hate to say this, embarrassing as it is, I actually have one myself. I haven't gotten around to fixing that, though. So anyway, I'm going to show you this is what it looks like. So there we go. It's got a reverse hot neutral there. So if you've got a refrigerator uh, plugged into this, uh, there's a possibility that can affect it as well. And you'd be surprised how many houses I inspected where uh, many of the outlets are just not wired correctly. And it will still work, of course, uh, but it's, it's not right and it can actually damage the appliance. So anyway, uh, I hope this has been somewhat informative to you. It certainly has to me. Um, I'm glad I was actually able to get the equipment to do this, and but the main thing is I've now had the equipment to uh, fix an issue uh, that's happened to me. Uh, that's happened to me two times just in the last year. So, and I certainly don't want to burn up um, this old amplifier. I mean, this these things are expensive too, and it's hard to get parts for them as well. And so, anyway, uh, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If there's any questions that you'd like for me to answer, if I can answer them, uh, please put them in the comments. But also uh, put your two cents in as well because, um, you know, it would be good for the community to know any additional information that might be useful regarding this. Take care, guys.